Hello friends, if I want to improve the performance of my mobile during the damage or during it, if it is falling down, what I will do? I will add the screen guard, I will add the cover so that at any moment of time, if it is falling down, it will be protected. Similarly, do we have something in our structures that during the event of earthquake or wind, can my building will be saved? Do we have something called performance-based design? Yes, it is there. And if you are really interested to see this performance-based design, you watch this video till the end. So let's get started. Whenever you are dealing with the earthquake, earthquake is nothing but the energy dissipation. You have to dissipate the energy which is coming or which is exerting onto the structure. So this is certain information facilitated by the CSI. I wouldn't like to tell you from the education point of view. So whenever there is an energy coming onto the structure, so let's say there is a structure and there is an energy. I mean the ground motions are coming as a part of the force. It will, it has to dissipate that energy in terms of displacement, in terms of the deflection or stresses, in terms of the bending action and all actually. So how do you do that? So this is the energy dissipation diagram versus the hysteresis curve or the hysteric. So what do you do? what do you mean by that? See, whenever the deflection is happening, it goes through certain phases. If you take the example of a human being also, if you want to do certain activities, initially he will have a thought in his mind. He will cultivate that thought. And whether to do, whether not to do, that kind of things will happen inside his, you know, in his mind. And once he decides, no, I want you to do this, then he does that kind of thing. Similarly, in the structure also, initially, yes, there is no thought process, but there are certain activities that are happening, which we call it as the modal damping, potential kinetic energy, as well as certain other types of damping. So what is this actually? So deflection doesn't happen immediately. One minute, I'll just zoom in a little bit for you. So whenever there is a ground motion, here you can see that initially there are certain hysteresis damping. So non-linear viscous damping, non-linear hysteric damping, modal damping will be there. Then the potential energy and the kinetic energy will be there. What do you mean by that? So if you take the example of 12th standard physics, you will see that there is a pendulum like this. And this kind of diagram, actually, we, have, we might have seen that during the 12th standard physics. So let's say, for example, this is the mass. If this pendulum, if you are displacing it from here to here, so this is, let's say, mass in the initial position. So it will have the maximum, what? The potential energy, but zero kinetic energy. Then from here, again, it will go here to here. Now, if this is the B condition, when it is coming back, it will have the maximum kinetic energy, but very little potential energy. So like that, you know the basic theory that it, it moves on. Similarly, structure also, whenever the ground motions are happening, it moves in certain directions. So at some places, you will see that there is a kinetic energy. Some places, you will see that there is a potential energy, which will uh, make the building deflection possible. So this diagram basically gives you the annotation about how much amount of damping is happening. What is damping? Damping is nothing but the energy is getting absorbed through certain damping process. Okay, if you see that the 12th standard physics, again I'll go back. So if you know the tuning fork, you know you do like this and you will see that the vibrations of the tuning forks are there. But if you take the tuning fork, not made up of steel, but made up of concrete, you will not see any vibrations because in the very first vibration itself, the entire energy will get absorbed or dissipate. Okay, so it will not be giving the resonance or the further features which are related to the vibrations. It means that the vibrations are to be dealt properly with the energy dissipations or energy components. So this is that particular 
graph which we call it as the energy diagram versus the static curve now there are so many other types of diagrams are there now this is basically the implied non-linear behavior the the behavior which is linear and the behavior which goes to the non-linear type force versus the deformation okay so this is another curve which we call it as the steel stress strain relationship curve so initially it will be the linear curve so i'll just give you know the annotations here you can see that this is basically the linear curve till this particular point and then it goes to the non-linear format from this upper yield point okay all right so whenever you are designing the structures you cannot basically dealt with such kind of diagrams so you can see that it is going like this straight then it is going like this like this you cannot deal with that so we call it as the simplified version for mathematical computation what we do is we you know take it straight diagram like this and take it straight diagram like this so it will help it will be definitely helping us to do the idealization of the curve which is actually ex existing onto the structure so this is the stress strain diagram now there is a inelastic work diagram hysterical diagrams and varied variety of other diagrams are there but related to the moment i wanted to tell you initially initially when we are dealing with any type of stress strains or any type of moment versus the rotation curves and all during the college days during the education we have seen the structure fall into only this particular category which considers to the hoops law like stress is directly proportional to the strain the moment is directly proportional to the rotation so we do not take the very other areas where there is a probability of having a little bit more capacity in terms of the bending in terms of the flexure in terms of the shear and deflections and many other areas so we do not deal with the other part but when you deal with the performance based design when you are hitting let's say the mobile to the core that it is going to get break down when you are applying the earthquake or the ground motion still the time where the structure is going to get collapse stage during that time how much the performance of the structure is it becomes very very at most important so when we are dealing with all this i would like to tell you that when we, how to deal with this kind of analysis ductility partial ductility brittleness or full ductile nature which is dealt with is 13920 how to calculate all this how to do this kind of simulations so let's see the actual model of this so let's get started with the actual model here so i'll just dealt with the normal si system and i'll go to the let's say the two to a ribbed slab i'll just press okay here and okay here so simplistic models will take it now first of all i would like to select all the columns and I'll apply the columns as the non-linear hinges. How do we do that? You go to the hinges. Now here I'll give the relative distance is zero. And here it would be, and here it would be the concrete columns. And I'll give this value as zero here. And I'll, later on I'll give this value as one here. Now what is one and zero? One and zero is the initial and the final uh, position of a particular column right so this is how actually the modification will be there so this is the concrete columns now similarly i'll apply this to the beams so let's select object type as beams so i've selected all the beams as you can see that then i'll apply the same thing for the beams so i'll just go here zero as the concrete beams and one Till the end point of this once i have done that i'll select all and i'll go to the hinge overrides and give the hinge overrides means the finite element meshing will be i'll be doing it at at the interval as 0.02 what is hinge hinge is nothing but the sensor it it will sense it 
that how much uh, actually the rotation or moment or uh, deflection that is happening. One more thing I want to tell you that we need to go for the non-linear analysis of this. So how do you do that? I'll go to the response spectrum, I'll delete this and I'll select let's say the Indian IS 1893 2016. Okay, so I'll just rename this as 1893 here, which is the response spectra. Now, after doing this, we have to go to the time history function. And in the time history function, you can go to the matched response spectra, which we call it as the synthetic earthquake. I'll give you here TH time history function and match response spectra is this. So let's say fifth. Uh, I have consider, uh, currently I have taken it as a uh, zone 5. You can also add the response, uh, the, uh, the time history uh, responses from the time history function. If you are having, currently I am dealing with this uh, El Centro earthquake time history. Once you have done that, I'll just go to the matched time history function. Now what is this? We generally take the uh, mathematical interpolation or mathematical operation here uh, so that this time history will be transformed into the response spectra here. This is basically the uh, inverse Fourier series transformation that is happening automatically over here. Once it is done, I'll go to the define and I'll define this as the time history and FNA, which is fast nonlinear analysis. And I'll go here as an acceleration in case of U1 and I'll give the time history as TH. And I'll give the scale factor as let's say 10,000. Uh, basically, what is the scale factor? Generally, 9810 would be the G value, the gravity value. Okay, 9.81, you know that meter per second square is the... Um, gravitational acceleration so if you convert it in terms of the unit factor it will come near to the 10,000 so I'll just give the G as the scale factor here once I given that I'll just press ok here uh, I'll just give the time history as the name of the load case here and I'll just say ok now once I have given that particular load over here make sure that you are given the proper mass source now i'll give the mass source as one time dead load and um, generally 25 percentage of lie load if the lie load is less than three once i had done that i'll just run the analysis i'll just give any particular file name a here now i'm running the not only, not only the static analysis, which is the dead load, lie load, or the modal load, as well as I'm running the time history, non-linear time history analysis over here. So let us see that, how is the performance of a building? So let's go here and add the performance clauses. And once you apply this, I'll just go to the performance. So let's go to the display the performance and you will see that all the things are perfectly okay nothing is wrong in this okay everything is there in the color only except at one or two places at uh, this cyan color but all the places it is perfectly okay it is under zero now what we'll do is we'll unlock the model and we'll go to the define and uh, again go to the FNA TH which is time history and I'll just increase this to one two three thousand times more All right now I'll run the analysis again so what I've done is I'll tell you initially I have checked my mobile with the normal operations now I'm going to throw it from somewhere to see that how was the performance of my mobile Similarly, the structure also with the normal earthquake, which is as per the code and all. I'll just design it. I'll just check it, analyze it. And then I'll give a very severe earthquake and then check which are the areas we I need to protect it so that I can increase the performance of a structure. Got it? So let's see that. After improving this, we'll go to the, again, to the time history. 
now here again i'll go to the times this performance check and then i'll apply this now you can see that many many portions it is in red 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 color since i have given the hinges non-linear hinges hinges is nothing but these are nothing but the sensors that it will sense that you know oh my god there is a problem here there's a problem here and all. if you are not giving the right sensor at the right point then also the analysis will not come properly after doing this you can see that there are so many red red zones are there because you have applied a very severe earthquake here if you want to see the other diagrams like we have seen it before like for example cumulative work versus inertia diagram so you can see that kinetic energy potential energy modal or the global damping these are the cases now you can also observe this carefully that at the this is the time period in seconds so first few seconds if you see that there is hardly any absorption of the energy that is happening right so other areas you can see that the energy components the cumulative components are there but at the very first stages the cumulative components are not there so it's very important that's why the first mode it carries a lot of weightage so this is one thing and one more thing which i wanted to show you here which is very important is like if you go to the combined response spectrum now this is one of the very very important point what is this this is combined response spectra combined response spectra means here you will see the displacement drift shear overturning and these are the capacity curves minimum versus maximum and at any particular moment this is the time is true function which it is going the time is true function along with the time how the building is performing so this is the encyclopedia of the performance space design based on this you will identify that exactly which areas are under problem now i have given 1000 time speaker so let's give 100 time speaker so again i'll go here and i'll reduce one zero or yeah one zero is better and again run the analysis so again i'll go to the performance check and you can see that after pressing this apply button you will see that yes there are certain areas the structure is okay but there are certain areas the structure needs to be addressed so which are those areas i'll just show you these are the red zone areas so what i'll do is i will make sure that if there is a column I'll apply certain thickening of the beam or the column at the junction at this particular places so that my structure would be comparatively better. See that old age monuments, you will see that similar type of structures. You will see at the corners there will be chamfer or there will be a huge massive stone or something like that it is given so that the performance of a structure can be enhanced and you, we can witness that also so many temples in india it is like we do not know when it has been constructed 2000 3000 5000 years back and those kind of things also we can see so that's how how you can improve the performance of the structure by using software called etaps i hope you really like this video if you really liked it please give a thumbs up if you really loved it please subscribe to the channel thank you very much bye bye